TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, so I, on Documentary Monday, which was Monday that just passed, which I want to say, man, I, I thank y'all, man. Y'all making that day could go crazy. Y'all love the documentaries, man. Who would have thought? We like to learn. Um, I forgot to do this one. Crime Invasion Yardies. Is this the right one? I don't know if this is the right one. I asked Buddy that wanted me to do it. He been asking for a long time. I, I think this is it. It's either this one or this one. Uh, the Yardie, Jamaican Gang in the UK. Let's do this one. Yardie. All right, let's and go. a devastating new drug. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that how it's going to look the whole time? So this lot of people got. Nah, bro. Can't do it. You can do this one. Let's go. In our cities, police are in a constant battle to crush one of Britain's most violent and ruthless street Ooh. gangs, Jamaican criminals known as the Yardies. It was just anarchy. That's the correct word for it. They would just jump out of the car and just pop you. Jump out, gang. But now the battle is spreading across the country. Dog food. Astonishingly. Dog food. But now the battle is spreading across the country as astonishingly. UK, I mean, not UK. YouTube, I don't condone any of this. I'm just saying what I see. And I'm just giving my perspective. That's all. Kids stay in school. Kids don't do drugs. Kids be kids. The Yardies are taking their unique brand of criminality to the towns of rural Britain. That title was enough to install fear in our local drug community. I'll meet the police who combat this new 45. Yardy crime. Oh, them is 38. The victims who suffer from it and the gangsters who oh, are 40. I didn't care if I died. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care about life. I always say, you know, if you kill me today, you can't kill me tomorrow. I'm Raggy Omar. Well, that's a saying for you right there, buddy. And I'm going in search of the violent gangs, the high-tech fraudsters, and the organized networks that are the new face of Britain's criminal underworld. Crime invasion. Yardis. Tonight, the Yardies, a ruthless gang who have brought 45, to I'll be investigating or is that a Colt 45? Phenomenon. Yardies are leaving their inner city Whatever it was. and are spreading their unique brand. Sorry if I got that wrong. I'm a G-Lock specialist. I don't know nothing about it. Criminality to the towns of rural England. And I'll be looking at the legacy the Yardies left behind in our inner cities, where copycat criminals have taken Yardie style violence to new terrifying levels. And it's ready to fight. With the suppressor on there? Where the shoestring at, though? About the yardies and occasionally saw stuff on the news. During a four week period last year, Hyrone Hart and Kirk Roberts went on the spree of killing, robbery, and rape. The impression that I got was that, um, that they were very much a rough and ready kind of gang, that they used violence. Three people have been tied up and executed in their home in front of a small child. Drugs was their main business. And they, they used any method and any tool to... Shit do not work for that motherfucker. For that mother effer. Sorry, YouTube. I apologize. I'm, I'm not cursing them. To, to make them get ahead of other gangs. Even police officers were taken aback by the, by the extreme nature and the extreme level of the violence. The Yardies were named after the Jamaican slang word for home, Yard. They burned brightest in the 1980s when, using family ties, they came to Britain from Jamaica and set up violent and chaotic drug dealing operations on the streets of the UK's major cities. Okay. Bobby Cummins, a former East End hitman who was once classed as one of Britain's most dangerous men, remembers when the Yardies first arrived. So when the Yardies came to Britain and started to establish... So this dude was one of Britain's most dangerous men, classed. Okay. How did the way they practice crime 
this dude. Things and what effect did it have on, on crime? When the yard is come, it was chaotic violence. It was violence out of control. There was no discipline there. People with guns were just letting them off. Um, and it was for the most serious things. There was no negotiation. We never trod on each other's toes. The Yardies trod on everyone's toes. Anarchy. That's the... Didn't care. Ruthless. They lawless. That's how everybody is nowadays. Renegades. Okay. Come on, bro. Damn, don't start with that. For it. it was anarchy with people who have come into another culture, didn't understand the culture, didn't understand the rules. So to them, there was no rules. In our cities, police have kept up a constant battle with these ruthless street gangs. So they've never completely won it. And now the battle has spilled into the towns of rural England. Rural England. contained extracts from a disturbing police report which reveals that Yardi gangs have spread to areas of the country which you would never have imagined. Like what? The recent confidential report details exactly how this has happened. For example, according to this report, in Avon and Somerset, uh, over three or four years, there had been a huge increase in Jamaican criminal gangs, mainly... Avon and Somerset are those predominantly well-structured, well-populated, rich areas? Parties ...operating in the Bristol area. In Cambridgeshire, police say they raided... Cambridge, okay. ...20 suspected houses... Cambridgeshire. ...Gloucestershire in the heart of the Cotswolds. Okay. ...arms incidents in Gloucester involved Yardie gangs. And also, even in Hampshire, six Yardies arrived in Southampton, apparently, in order to sell... Oh, Southampton. ...and heroin. They are going OT. What the hell? OT bop. They were OT bopping. YouTube, I'm not condoning it. The smile on my face is because I'm making myself laugh. Feels that Yardies now control nearly 50% of the UK's crack cocaine trade. Damn. They set up crack, heroin, and prostitution networks throughout the UK. Almost every police force in Britain is now engaged in operations against them. This is West Mercia Police, one of Britain's smallest police forces. Mark Peters is one of the officers working with the drug squad. This is uh, one of the main property stores at Hereford uh, Police Station. So there's just a few select items that we've got here. And these are some of the weapons his team found when a gang of Jamaicans arrived in the market town of Hereford and turned a small residential area of the city into a drug market. They just oh, came wow. down here using the Yardie title, and that was enough to uh, subdue our local people, I think. And they were an unknown quantity, and I think people were genuinely, genuinely scared of them, really. Hereford is a small rural town with a population of barely 56,000. Like many such places, it has had its drug problems, but they got a whole lot worse when Mark Peters tracked two Jamaican drug dealers, Anthony Peterkin and Kenrick Duncan, to the area. Tracked two Jamaican drug dealers Whatever happened to blending in? Blend! Of course they are gonna part spot you up. You're not even trying to blend, my boy. Anthony Peterkin and Kenrick Duncan to the area. It was a microcosm of what was happening throughout the UK. The two Yardie drug dealers had been pushing crack cocaine from their inner city stronghold in Birmingham and were now looking to spread into the countryside. Peterkin and Duncan were known in the West Midlands. They were certainly uh, involved criminally in uh, the supply of control groups. They saw a gap, I believe, an opportunity. Look at this guy. Look at it. Well, that doesn't, something doesn't look right here. Yeah, they saw a gap, I believe, an opportunity uh, in the market. Not only have they got uh, the West Midlands police to deal with in the West Midlands, they've also got larger dealers to deal with, larger gangs. They come down here, and uh, I think they were a big fish in a very small pond. Everybody yeah. knew they'd gone, we'd just go and bash their door in, and it became almost like a routine. we bash their door in, they'd swallow the drugs, and in the end, we just decided that it was, we just couldn't let it continue. Okay, so what I do? Break the gang, police launched an operation that required months of painstaking surveillance on the gang's crack house. Techniques developed by big city forces were now being used on the streets of Hereford. Wow. All the operations were placed. That's not the attention that you want, my guy. After the first kick, though, you got to get up out of there. 
and it was nothing uh, for us to see a hundred callers a day uh, coming to this place. Um, some time. Oh my God! They had the block in Hetherford. That's what it's called. I forgot the name of this place. They had the block on fire. Sometimes the same call would appear three times. The police watch the house and piece together a picture of what is going on behind the front door. They discover a sophisticated shift system involving gang members from Birmingham. You'd see a car pull up um, with some uh, Jamaican um, people. The person who, whose shift it was at that time would remain in that room for a period of three days and they would go into the premises and people would come out. When the drugs run out, a new team bringing in fresh drugs takes over the shift. It is a small but active band of criminals, typical of how Yardies run their crack houses. A CCTV camera protects their dealing house from police and rival gangs. At its height, they are doing 300 deals a day. They'd knock on the door, the door would be opened, the doorman would um, take your money, the dealer would give the doorman the drugs, the caller would receive their drugs from the doorman. So there was very, very little interaction between the dealer and the customer. Callers were also uh, instructed upon leaving the premises to uh, secrete drugs in their mouth. They're quite shrewd, really, in thinking about the evidential process while they're operating in this manner. Two things, they secure it in your mouth, you quick to swallow it. I, I don't know any about this, but I'm just guessing. Two things, you secure it in your mouth, it's quick to swallow just in case the police run up on you. This is what I'm guessing. This is the, my inf this is what I'm inferring. And then the second one, the saliva removes any DNA from anybody that was inside the house off the bags. Smart. The rest of the residents in this street, it, 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 was, a, it was a nightmare for them. Along with the drugs came the violence. I sat here and watched them knife fighting in the street fist fighting in the street and uh, doors being smashed in. You had people lying on your wall, smacked out their heads, or at one point I had 28 needles removed from the back garden and eight removed from the front, used hypodermics. Just chuck Oh out. man. One of those who had his run-ins with members of the gang was Wayne Newman, a former crack addict. I was looking for someone to score and one of them, my mates said to me, well, the only way, the only place you can get it from is the blacks up so-and-so. And that's when I knew that there was you know, five or six of them in different parts of Arryford, Salon, the heroin and the, the crack cocaine. It was the Yardies and the Blacks that first brought it to Arryford, like, because um, that's, that's more their drug to Salon, basically. They'll use machetes, knives, sometimes even guns. A friend of mine got sliced down the face. I know a fella that had his hand nailed to the table. Damn. While one surveillance team monitor the crack dealing house, another team track Peterkin back to Jamaica, where he is looking to buy more cocaine. Jamaica had become a favorite transit point for Colombian cocaine, and it was the Yardies who controlled the lucrative smuggling routes to the UK. But unlike other gangs who smuggled in bulk using sophisticated routes, the Yardies exploited drug mules. Alicia, a mother of three, claims to have been offered £150 a trip by Jamaican Yardies to swallow bags of cocaine to smuggle into... 150 that's not enough for your life. Listen. No amount is enough for your life. Let's clarify. So something about that long and sort of very narrow, quite narrow. Yeah, and depends on how much you can swallow. On the plane, feeling so bad after keep on drinking tea, but you have to know when you're drinking the tea. Yeah. Not too hot because it can burst it in the yeah, belly. Yeah, exactly. Knowing that I go through the first time and I keep on doing it. Mm. So I know that it wasn't right, but. It makes you think about the extent to which these Yardi gangs will go to to exploit any opportunity, any desperate situation. Here's a young girl, three children. Yeah, it's a desperate no situation. Father, okay. And she has to put, you know, meals on the table. We know that this at one point was used. It doesn't make it okay, but I get I mean I get it. Mark Peters decides he now has enough evidence to move in on Peterkin and Duncan and their crack house. We've all got an image of what a crack house is in our mind. And this certainly doesn't appear the place that would be right to, to have one really. It is one of the biggest drugs raids Hereford's police have ever carried out. 
Once inside the heavily fortified base, they find a drug dealing infrastructure that mirrors the Yardi's violence and chaotic attitude to life. They just go day to day, really, uh, and survive day to day um, through criminality, and they take their chances. I believe life is very cheap for them. That's, that's not it, my guy. <clears throat> these are some of the swords that were seized. One of these swords was strategically placed at the top of the stairs um, in the rung of a ladder. This is uh, an acro prop, and this was used to uh, wedge the door. There was a, a firearm involved in the oh, door. Oh, wow. And the firearm was said to be um, secreted within a loaf of bread. We seized many, many mobile phones. Many of the knives that we seized also had powder, traces of powder there on. My favorite evidence was Kendrick Duncan's fingerprint on the inner wrapping of the drugs, because having not been seen in Hereford for such a long time, for his fingerprint to be on the that inner wrapping is, is so crucial. It just goes further to show that even though he wasn't down here, him and Peter Kim were still controlling things and running that business from afar. Oh, oh God, Jack, what's up? 2006, Peterkin and Duncan and their gang were sentenced to a total of 65 years in prison, but their legacy still remains. Police estimated that at the height of their operation, they were making £31,000 a month. And Mark Peters and his team are braced for new Yardi gangs who could step into their shoes at any time. The fact that the, they were alleged Yardies... They're not coming there no more. ...thing for the local drug community in Hereford. And, and that's all we, we were hearing. They're real nasty. They're well connected in Birmingham, you know. And then you get the old firearms, the prostitution, and that position, that title, uh, I believe, was enough to instill fear in in the, our local drug community. Just the map turn. Fear in, in our local, our drug, local community. drug community. Just the map turn. In part two, I'll discover what happened when the Yardies left their inner city strongholds. Mm -hmm. And I'll be looking at the copy. My Max a piece of shit though. I mean, honestly, there's one uh, in Chicago. This is a popular one. That's real popular. But it's ass. There's no aim. But this is Chicago once again. Important. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that I condone any of this because I don't. But it is what it is. We count criminals who took the Yardie's unique brand of street crime to an even more terrifying level. Take it off safety and it's ready to fight. I've seen what happened when the Yardies moved out of the inner cities and took their criminality to the town of Rory in it. Now I wanted to find out what they left behind in Britain's inner cities. The answer is terrifying. Copycat criminals who've taken Yardi techniques to new horrific levels. All right, this is the map turn. This footage was shot recently on right, part two? State. It shows a so-called armorer, a man who provides weapons like this lethal Mac-10 submachine gun for gang members and drug dealers. Just a clip for it. Just a clip back there. There's a silence on right there for it. Doesn't work. Screw that on. Cock it back. Yeah. Take it off safety. And it's ready to fight. Got to make the man there get rich right now. That there is the essence there. Look at that. You know what that is? This footage was filmed by drug Jesus dealers Christ. themselves. They're talking street slang. B for brown or heroin. P for paper or money. That's the B right now. What's up there? Look, what's up there? What's up there? What's up there? What's up there? This is the reality of today's inner cities. A casual attitude to guns and drugs copied straight from the Yardies. Chris is a reformed Yardie drug dealer who came to the UK from Jamaica. His friend Watchman was a British-born criminal who adopted Yardie techniques and who spent several years in prison for robberies and GBH. They told me why Grievous the bodily harm. targeted the UK. The system over here is kind of still easy. We can play it. It's not like Jamaican police, so you, I mean, you can tell them about that. Right. Shoot you dead on the spot. The Jamaican police, they don't play. They don't play, they will shoot you in the spot. One don't mean nothing to nothing, man, them out there. You know, they got the one pop them back in the early days. Right. 
a little mm. one shot on a man. So they're used to that. They play with guns like toys. It was a yardy characteristic, an indiscriminate and casual attitude to life and death. How, how should I say it now? I didn't care if I died. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care about life. I just sell my drugs and, 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 and do my thing. If you rob me, I'm going to come and get you. If you get me, I, 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 I always say, you know, if you kill me today, you can't kill me tomorrow. In reality, the Yardies weren't really an organized criminal Good. gang at the beginning. They're more like a collection of individuals who came together whenever it suited them to inflict their own brand of chaotic criminal activity. Nevertheless, they had a major... Those renegades, simple. Do their own thing until it's time to get to, to a common enemy or a common goal, then you get together. The impact on the streets of the UK. This is Broadwater Farm, a council estate in North London. It was here that I discovered how the Yardies influenced local copycat criminals. Thought they was friends like a mother. Michael, Michael! Including one particular individual who adopted Yardie techniques and took their unique brand of violence to a new terrifying level. Okay, what level? Well, I've come here to the Broadwater farm estate because I want to learn about a really notorious British born Yardie who lived on this estate and he used methods which were almost straight out of a Yardie textbook. Mark Lambie's story mirrors the story of the rise of violent street crime in the UK. He began as a small-time drug dealer. At the tender age of 21, he became head of the Tottenham Mandem crew, a violent gang of drug dealers. Heard of them before? That's when he came to the attention of Detective Chief Inspector Peter Lansdowne of the Metropolitan Police. His criminality was quite spontaneous. They could be out on a social function, um, literally step on somebody's shoes and end up in a shootout. Hey, listen. <laughs> the way Air Force Ones is out here right now, it take you, it, you could barely get some, you step on these forces, hey, listen, hey. Whatever come after that, they come after that. YouTube, I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying. While on routine surveillance, Lansdowne's team followed Lambie and a convoy of gang members into the estate, unaware that it was the start of a series of events that would lead to Lambie's downfall. In the early evening, it's getting dark. It's very difficult for, for the surveillance officers to actually see what's going on. The, the gang came down here into the underground car park. We didn't actually know what they were doing down here. Robbing other drug dealers was a classic Yardie tactic. Now, Lambie, a British-born criminal, yeah. was about to use that same tactic That's a lick. to Yardie oh. drug dealers. These two fellas turned up here in, in a nice blue Mazda sports car and were set upon by the gang. Approximately 10 people, mainly armed with handguns, jumped out, beat them, um, assorted them, and put them in the boots of, of two of the cars. The put them in the what? Put them in the boots. That's the trunk or something? Of, of two of the cars. The police, unaware of what had just happened, followed the two cars carrying the bound and gagged Jamaicans <gasps> to a nearby estate. The two Jamaicans, Morris and Smith, had been dragged up to the flat at number 49 uh, and taken in there to be tortured. Lambie uh, allegedly was demanding £20,000 in money and or drugs from the two victims. The victims were taken in, were, were led upstairs. In the kitchen, you, you can see the hammer that was used to, to hammer Damn. the toes of one of the victims. Ooh, one had a kettle of boiling water <coughs> poured over his genitals. Oh and my God. So y'all, so this is, y'all was behind them, following them, seeing them get dragged up, didn't get out of the car, let them got tortured. And with an electric iron, you can see some of the blood on the bottom of the radiator there. It was everyday business for, for Lambie. It was extortion, drugs money, stealing cash from individuals. Chris and Watchman told me that the reason why British-born criminals turned out to be even more violent than the Yardies was purely to do with criminal competition. The English you ain't fair in Yardie. Yard them is, what, that don't mean nothing to know your English you again. You know what I mean? They tell the truth, they're probably busting more shot than the Yardie them now. You know, but when the yardies come, we have to step up in the area that we know. So you're like, all right then, you come from yard, all right, you're, you're going like you're a bad man. All right then, we know bad man, all right, we can deal with it. 
when there's drugs, you must have to be armed up. You have to be just, you know, kitted. You have to know. So, yeah, it brought a kind of a different flex to the old ball game over here, which is true. Because a man ain't going to be walking with a kilo, you know, and he's got certain things stashed away and he ain't got his piece on him. Mm. You have to defend that. Chris, you know about that. Yeah. Back on Broadwater Farm. That makes sense. Steve Lansdowne described how Lambie and his gang began to target innocent victims. They forced their way into the address and ransacked it. They attacked the, the two girls who lived there, their children. Oh, wow. were, were so they just got the kick door. B and E. Tied up with gaffer tape, laid on the floor, and basically stripped of their possessions of watches and jewelry. The gang lost control at this point. They were attacking people like a pack of hyenas. Within seconds, that's what got them popped off, man. And, and we'd scrambled out to try and find Lambie and his associates somewhere in the Tottenham area. It was to prove to be the beginning of the end for Lambie and his gang. Through the streets of North London, police chased the car carrying Lambie's henchmen and drugs stolen from the two Jamaican dealers, Smith and Morris. Yeah, B and E would get you popped off, especially in, especially in a high-end neighborhood like this. Once you get to attacking them high-end people, they gonna come out there. Uh, Flip the curb and flicked up onto its roof and crashed. And a quarter of Should have got the scousers to drive for you. Simple. A kilo of heroin fell from the vehicle and burst across the road. Lambie started phoning Morris and Smith and, and made demands uh, to the effect that a quarter of a kilo of heroin had been recovered by the police. And Morris and Smith owed him 5,000 pounds in lieu of that drugs. And that if they didn't come up with the money, that they or their family would be killed. They move them crazy. Gang behind bars, police soon swooped on Lambie himself. Lambie was sentenced to 12 years for kidnap and torture. But that's not yeah, the, yeah, of the story yeah. for Broadwater Farm. Not off like the inner city estates like it. Even when police succeed in putting criminals like Lambie and his gang away, there are always younger kids ready to replace them. Facts. It's a never ender cycle, never ending. Only thing that's going to stop any of this is opportunity and growth within those neighborhoods. And, and that ain't happening, obviously. It's easier to blame UK drill music. Goofies. 15, 16 years old. That's goofy to blame UK drill music when obviously there's a whole system failing the inner you. <laughs> It's big, it's clever to carry a gun. What other arms do you sell? Three, three eighths, nines, anything. We will never know the identity of this armorer who provides weapons for gang members, but the answer he gives to one question will always haunt us. How young is the youngest person you've sold a gun to? About 15, 14. The really sad thing at the heart of this story is of how violence just seems to get out of control. And when a gang comes along that uses new methods and a new level of violence for turf, for influence, for money, for prestige, what that does is that it lays down a marker almost for the next generation of criminals to go beyond it and the violence just spirals ever increasingly upwards. Next time on Crime Invasion... I don't, I don't care. No, 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 no. Let's stop right there. Let me stop you right there, sir. What I came for is finished. I don't want to hear. Um, that's interesting. I mean, all of it makes sense when you come from... Uh, somebody like me, to me, it makes sense. So I look outside, I see what's going on. So it's like, eh. But TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Here's a documentary for you on a Friday.